glad okay, so right. we come to the last presentation of the day. Uh, last but not least. Are you going to join me, Daya? I don't know, but I'm here. Let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah. So if I do not recognize any more what Felipe has written down, then you take over. Okay. Go on, go on. So um, we had been discussing for several weeks now how software in an in vehicle environment could actually be orchestrated or should be orchestrated. Um, for those of you now asking what the heck does orchestration mean? I have no clue. We have discussed that a lot as well. There seems to be some agreement that it revolves around running some stuff in the car and uh, also thinking about how do you actually manage that process, meaning how do you start it and stop it and make sure that it is running, stuff like that. Uh, it's also clear that we're talking about not a single type of payload or workload like a container, but maybe even standard binaries or system D services, whatever. Um, next slide. Uh, no, no, just stay there. Just say something. So as you can see, it was uh, actually a broad audience, um, many people involved, which always is good when it comes to you get different perspectives, but which is also bad because you get different perspectives, right? So uh, everybody has uh, an opinion about it, and this working group or this breakout group is far from agreeing on the single truth. It's just about getting the discussion started and uh, yeah, collecting ideas. So now next one. So uh, yeah, that was the overall idea what we wanted to achieve. Um, the thing being, we do not want to define the software architecture that everybody should follow, but we, the overall goal was to just define a concrete software architecture that can actually yeah, serve up to the purpose and uh, implement the use cases described below, which is on the next slide. Uh, actually not the use cases, but some definitions first. Okay, so. Um, we soon realized that if we want to continue discussing about this, we need to at least agree on some certain terminology, and this is uh, an attempt to uh, define some of that terminology in our context, and I do not want to read it out loud to you now, but uh, maybe you can take a good look at it for some seconds, and Daniel can comment on that as well. Maybe one quick comment, and this is, I uh, should be okay. Can you guys hear me? Right. This is uh, coincidental. But essentially, this is something like a parallel evolution slash lead up to what Daishi showed earlier. But you know, he put it in a lot more polished form, essentially, and he's actually started implementing it. But this is the same topic space. And essentially, that group that Kai uh, showed earlier, I mean, that's the group from the STV Eclipse context who was trying to get their grips, their hands on here. What are we actually talking about? And what's the kind of, as Kai just said, what's the kind of, you know, topic and context that we are in? So this is tying back into Aishi's presentation. Yeah, and I think we can agree maybe on the last one with the control plane. That is uh, what we have seen in the presentation before, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. So um, we also try to define some principles, uh, trying to not get the let the discussion to become too wild, but yeah, put some constraints on the whole thing. And uh, one of them, obviously, uh, being that it should obviously be based on open source software, mostly or preferably existing ones, but where possible, creating new one in our community. Um, do not reinvent the wheel. Um, The first thing is also important, I think. Uh, we do not want to tie it to a particular hardware architecture or software architecture that is out there. Um, it should at least try to be platform neutral and architecture neutral. However, we also do not want to um, try to define this for the whole wide array of hardware platforms that are out there, but at least make some assumption that we can all feel comfortable with and that we have actually some experience with, like. Uh, yeah, basically a 64-bit Linux system with some reasonable amount of RAM. So, next one. So now the use cases. Um, we try to constrain ourselves a little, um, trying to make it a little easier at first by confining ourselves to a QM use case. 
and uh, simply deploying some software artifacts into an in-vehicle computer schedule and manage and run it. And later on, extend these use cases with, uh, yeah, like it's uh, indicated here with a wish list, like uh, we want to also be able to distribute or install com software onto um, sub subcomponents in the car, ECUs, uh, other in-vehicle computers and stuff like that. Multiple targets as it's called here, even touching onto um, uh, traditional Autostar applications and the like. However, we are still discussing the first use case, uh, if you will, and we're, I guess, quite far away from the from the bottom ones. Um, this is an overview of related projects. Um, I'm not really sure if that is uh, really helpful right now. Um, it just gives an impression of that this is not really greenfield, but there are a lot of things that already deal with uh, with this topic, and several of them are probably worth taking a look. Um, do not put too much interpretation into that. That doesn't mean that Sophie doesn't really make sense. It just means um, we currently do not really subscribe to this overall idea that it has to be Kubernetes in the car. Um, just like we do not really know what it actually should be, but we're pretty sure it is not Kubernetes in the first step. Hey. Then um, Philippe started to create a, a great list of uh, things that might be relevant or must must be in there, should be in there, could be in there, or should not be in there, could not be in there. Um, whether you subscribe to this list is basically up to you. We couldn't really agree yet on the full list. Um, the first ones, however, seem pretty reasonable and obvious and agreeable, if you will. But the further down you go, um, it basically depends on your use case or what you want to uh, what do you want to use the system for. Anything special that I should point out here? Anything that you feel is completely disagreeable or nonsense or should be must be? Well, if you go back to your previous slide, the one before that. Yes, yes. So I think part of the, the problem that you have is that right now your use cases are very high level in terms of their, their, their fixed criticality. The problem is as soon as you go into things like A, like A sub C and A sub D, you have to have this, this, uh, this physical separation. So there is going to be a hypervisor or something there because the only communication you're going to have between one side or the other is going to be via the hypervisor or some other mechanism because this is how it's guaranteed in the isolation room in the SOC itself. So you can do nothing at a protocol layer higher up this all has to be basically on the, either through GPS or, or some sort of shared memory aperture or something like this or ring buffer um, through some le special layer within the hypervisor. So I'm not sure how you 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 see that, but I mean the, I think the, the common theme, at least in the last couple of presentations, is that everything is going into containers, everything is going to be higher level and abstract, and that's lovely for infotainment and all of these other high level things, but it's completely useless if we need to do that together with something that's really in the same principle. I totally agree with what you said, and that's the reason why I pointed out we're very up here and not down there. <laughs> yeah, but I, I I basically agree. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just let me just continue, and at the end I will probably give another comment on that. Okay. Next one. So this is already the uh, last slide, and um, the. The experience so far, from my point at least, has been that we have been discussing a lot and everybody has an opinion and brings their idea in there, what it should be, what it should not be. Um, personally, I think we have now reached a state where we basically understood the problem domain. We have defined some, or try to apply some scoping, define some common terminology. But if you now want to make real progress, you now somehow need to start doing some real work on it. Start creating software that actually does what we describe. And now coming back to your point, this is exactly what now needs to be the next step, starting with the easier part, probably the first use case, getting that going, implementing that. This being a code first community, this to me at least looks like the obvious next step gather more experience and then going down the chain with the use cases. And this is also where I think everybody should now 
start you know, trying to either create a project or create some technology, bring some technology into the whole thing, um, or yeah, keep discussing in theory, but then I guess I will no longer be part of it. So to me now the point has been reached where we need to get yeah, get going and, and do some coding. And the topic in general is an interesting one as, you know, it's like text editors in the 90s. Everybody should write one. Um, so we have a bunch. You saw the slide with Sophie in the middle, etc. earlier, Tosca at the bottom. So it feels like everybody in that Ox has at some point looked into this and like 15 years back already, right? We didn't call it STV back then. Um, but the general ideas were kind of similar. The specific ideas were like sign of the times. They were different. One of the things I think we can use this topic for is what uh, was put out earlier this day. I mean, we can continue to fragment the community interest on the topic by creating yet another five projects. Maybe we also can figure out kind of one or two alignment points, right? To get a couple of like people together instead of having a couple more projects. And I don't know what the answer is for that, like where that alignment point might be. I'm just kind of certain that it will make more sense to find one instead of uh, creating another project. Um, let's see how that goes. And one thing that was at least, I mean, in our round we could agree on, and depending on what the answer is to that point just here, this topic in general might be a very interesting one to kind of, you know, practice those open source best practices on how to make a code base consumable for an automotive product. I mean, we have talked about that, we've heard about that earlier, we have to figure out, I believe we'll begin to figure out this year, what specifically we mean when we say that. I mean, there's a couple of kind of small hanging, low hanging fruit that we probably can agree on quickly. There's probably some like more complex things that uh, can come over time. But this kind of component and kind of the broad interest and impact it has makes it an interesting candidate for being a you know model citizen code base wise for an SDV. So, you know, between the validation testing group and what, what Johannes talked about earlier, between certain other things that have been touched on, um, infrastructure for this project, reproducible build pattern, etc. This might be a very nice, won't, won't say playground, but, you know, field for us to kind of figure out what the best practice could be. So that's an outlook or whatever you want to call it. Right. And this is about the end of the day. Well, maybe, maybe some more know. question yeah, or comments. Yeah. Point because I think, I mean, both presentation ended with a call to the community. So we have thought about it. This is what we have gathered so far. How do we proceed? Basically, we need to link to our projects because, as we said, we are code first. So we now, uh, so the, the guys that work on these projects, uh, on these breakout groups, thought this. Now we need volunteers uh, from the projects, which will be supported obviously by the community, but we need to start implementing it because otherwise it is just gathering of, of opinions, which is absolutely interesting, but we need to start doing something because most likely it's going to be iterative, an iterative process and we have to start somewhere. Um, so, and also to the projects, uh, I think it was Moek that presented this orchestration possibility. Uh, and also there might be other projects to 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 deal with it. But uh, but in general, just really uh, this is a call for action. And um, any question, any other remark? So do, does anyone in the audience has an opinion on what was presented? Would you do things differently? Because we need to start from at least a sort of agreement, which can be changed, but we need to start from an agreement, right? I think it's a very good approach to just start and all this as a stuff. And if it's possible, it's within one hypervisor or Docker or whatever, doesn't matter, 
just start something and get this running. And um, yeah, many people in many different, like Sophie, all the kinds of groups also um, now discussing different solutions for that. Um, until there is really a standard for this, and this might even be that there are different solutions for different parts of the problem, which also maybe refers to the nice chart which the Microsoft colleague showed. So if we try to tackle all complexity in one solution, this maybe gets also unmanageable. So it's maybe also not um, bad to strip it down into different smaller parts and to have a solution for uh, different kind of those parts. And I think the most important stuff is that we got get a nice standard there, which might not be the perfect solution for everything, but it's a great start for, for the most parts. As for example, to stay on the topic, you see with Docker. Docker wasn't the first to take a um, uh, virtualization in this approach. The foundation for that was in the Linux code for several years. The thing what made Docker special is what it, that it was easy and it brought an ecosystem to easily use it. And that is, I guess, something which is much more within the purpose. I agree. <laughs> Microphone. <laughs> Um, it wasn't clear to me, but I, if I understood well, you're addressing two topics. One is uh, deployment of software, and the second is scheduling and execution of software once it's deployed. Right? To me, these are two different topics that should be managed separately, and mixing them is, is uh, I, I, I think it's better to keep them separate, like, because the deployment and configuration that was presented earlier, I think is more related to over the air update and how and, and needs to be managed for the vehicle level. You cannot just deploy one piece of software somewhere in the vehicle and not care of the whole vehicle. Scheduling and execution on the other hand can be local. And so that's another reason I think to keep them separate, separate topics with two different solutions. Yeah, thanks for that. I, I think that came uh, that came up through our discussions as well. Philippe, you want to come on? Yeah, I think I want to just highlight. They are indeed <laughs> two projects in Eclipse Foundation. Um, there were, there is one for um, uh, software orchestration and there is one for resource scheduling and all of that. We realized when we started to work all together that we were uh, first trying to define what we wanted to solve. And so we, we decided to combine both groups understand the current state, understanding the current problem domain, because this is what you see here is a, it's just a definition of problem domain. And now that we have an idea what needs to happen, which is definitely split out the two, we will tackle them uh, as separates. And they are already created in Eclipse, like two separate independent work streams. Because yeah, we fully agree with you. How, however, I think um, you cannot simply talk about how do we actually schedule the workloads? Because in the end, this is the STV working group. So the idea is we get lots of updates very frequently of software into the car. So how does it get there? Now you can say, yeah, the OEMs have existing OTA solutions and you need to plug into that somehow. Okay, that might be an approach. And I'd be open to, to doing that even in open source if, if people want to work on that. Or you could say, yeah, and we also want to address that with some open source technology as well. But I still agree, these are two different things. And however, we need to think about both of them, I think, because one without the other doesn't really make sense to me at least. Anything else? People see the cocktails already. Yeah, so just, just one, one really quick question. So uh, I mean, quick point, we have to return this to the entrance. Well, just to make it clear, I cannot have anyone on the building that is not registered for security purposes. So tomorrow, don't forget to bring the badge. If you don't return it today, or if you want, we can take it. They will manage for you, and tomorrow back we will get you the badge again. It's like the old key to the 
to the hotel, right? You can either return it to the reception and you will find it again. Otherwise, if you take it with you, just don't forget it. Yeah, so thanks a lot, guys. It's been really, really good. Uh, lots of presentations.